Hi there, I'm Jill Conrath, and I'm here today with a friend of mine and a colleague, Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. And the reason we're talking today is because he has a brand new book that came out called High Profit Prospecting. And um, I have been I've been writing about prospecting for a long time and I have a lot of thoughts about it. So when Mark came out of with his new book, I absolutely wanted to find out what he has to say and what might be of value to you. So Mark, thanks for being here today. I'm really glad to talk with you. Hey, thanks. Thanks for allowing me on. And by the way, also, thank you for allowing me to put your name on the back cover of the book. And I call you out in the acknowledgement section of the book. So hey, Jill, you've been a terrific supporter of mine. You've been full of a lot of great advice. I very much appreciate <laughs> you just business say, relationship. I thought you were just going to say I was full of it and, and stop there, but you did continue on. So I'm really glad to see that. <laughs> okay, so I have a question for you. How do you define high profit prospecting? Well, let's define high profit prospecting by going to what's the solution. You want to be able to close more deals without having to discount. And really what happens is a lot of people wind up having to discount sales in order to close them because yeah. what they've been doing is they've been going after Walmart shoppers and trying to turn them into Nordstrom customers. If you want to do high profit prospecting, you got to start with the right prospects to begin with. When you start with the right prospects, it's amazing how much better, how much more efficiently, how much more effective you can be in closing at full price. So I'm assuming that you're seeing people going after the wrong prospects oftentimes from the get go. Is that correct? Yeah, because too many salespeople have this. Well, if they have a heartbeat, they're a prospect. Well, let me tell you something. My dog has got a heartbeat. <laughs> let me tell you something. My dog is not buying from me at all. You know, it, it, no, we, we have to be selective. You know, a whole goal, a whole objective I have is to show people how your objective is to spend more time with fewer prospects. Think about oh. that for a moment. More time with fewer prospects. That's exactly my philosophy, too. I think the emphasis on the past few years has been driving more and more prospects as opposed to looking at the quality of the prospects and um, not just the, the Walmart shopper versus the other one, but even the indicators that are going on in their, in their business or in their greater world that would help them uh, decide to change sooner rather than later. Yeah, and you know what, you've been a master of that because, you know, early on you were a real champion of that whole voicemail, that, that whole piece where, you know, if you leave a stupid message, it's not going to be returned. And if you think about that, what were you trying to convey to people? If you don't bring value yes. to your prospects, why should they even communicate with you? So you were really on the cutting edge of that with all of your books that you've really going back to selling to big companies, which really started this whole trend. Well, I think if you, if you put yourself in the prospect's perspective uh, and you're a busy person and you're going through your emails or you're going through your phone messages and you're sitting with your finger on the delete button. I mean, that is how we all work today. And if you can't deliver a message to somebody that doesn't, you know, get them to get delete. I mean, if, if somebody's deleting you, you have no chance. And then you just have to call often, more often and call back and then you turn into a pest and it doesn't work at all. So it's not effective. So what are you seeing that is working today? Well, first of all, let's let's cut to the chase regarding social social media because everybody says, well, well if you just media. do enough stuff on, yeah, yeah, because everybody says if you just do enough stuff on social media, well, let me tell you something: you can't eat likes, friends, connects, any of that sort of stuff. You know, and and, and here's a tweet. Oh, ooh, I'm going to give you a social media tweet. How's this sound? Hashtag <laughs> hashtag social media without social community is social stupidity. Ooh, think about that. That sounds moment. like something I could write on my computer right now and send out, right? There, there you go. Well, let's wait till let's wait till this is over, okay? Oh. Anyway, anyway, but but he, he, here's the whole deal. Social media works great. Social selling works great. But you have to take it to a one to one relationship. It's one to one. It's not just throwing a bunch of stuff and throwing it out there. That's like putting a billboard on the side of the road. Great, a lot of people see it, but are they really going to take action? And that's too many times what people think social media, social selling is all about. I want to be able to take prospecting and make it one-to-one. -one. Now, how do I get to that one-to-one? -one? By making it about them, not about you. And that's a real challenge because think about it. It really is helping the customer see that they didn't think was possible. That's really your, that's really your goal in sales. So you've got to kind of go upstream and begin that at the prospecting level. You got to help those prospects 
see and achieve what they didn't think was possible, that's how they begin to buy into you. That's how you begin to nurture them to become that high profit customer. Okay, so I just got an email today from somebody saying that they read my crap selling manifesto on, on my website. And in it, I state that there's a whole bunch of crappy words that you should never use, like you know, leading edge, state of the art, uh, you know, all those words that define who you are, you know, like you're the most wonderful uh, service oriented company in the entire world. What do you have to say to that person who says, if I can't use this, what should I be saying? Well, think about this. I, I don't exactly go up to my wife and say, hi, I'm leading edge. And no, <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, you know, no, I mean, I mean, you just, one of the big challenges is we get caught up in this, in this, in this sales speak. Let your personality come through. Let your person, you, you want to have a conversation with the prospect the same way you'd have a conversation with a friend. When you allow, because think about this, authenticity and transparency is yeah. more important than ever, especially with millennials. Millennials are very much looking for authenticity and transparency. Mm -hmm. And if you're coming through with, like you said, those leading edge and all those, you know, synergies, and uh, give me a break. <laughs> I want to partner with you to explore oh, right. what you might find mutually beneficial. And Oh, please, throw, you know, choke me right now. So you, this is the whole thing that you, you've got to create this conversation and, and maybe to a certain degree, this is the advantage that social media has kind of taught us, whether it be Snapchat, whether it be, mm -hmm. whether it be Twitter and so forth. It, it's, it's all just, just very short condensed, but it's relational. It's relational. And define what that you means. To, when, when you say it's relational, it, tell me yeah. what it is and how will yeah. somebody know if what they're doing is relational versus, you know, deletable sales crap. What <laughs> deletable sales crap? Because that's what the majority of the stuff is. First of all, you have to realize that everybody has a footprint out on the internet. So my first objective is to go out before I'm prospecting you is I want to find out a little bit about you. And, and then I'm going to use that. I'm, I'm going to use some. Now, I may not be able to find out about you personally, but I can find out about the company you work for and you know, so forth. So I'm going to make sure that my message begins targeting very specifically to your needs. Now, it, 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 it's not to the point that, whoa, this is creepy stalking, but it is where you say that, oh, wait a minute, this person, I, I think I do want to touch base with them because they do have something of interest to me, something of value to me. And you have to be seen as one of them. If you're not seen as one of them, this is especially talk critical. Talk more about that. Level. Yeah. Talk yeah. About yeah. You, you know, if you're prospecting at the senior level, you know, you're talking, you know, anybody at the C-suite, anybody with VP, anybody with director in their name. Mm -hmm. You have got to be seen as as one of them. It's just this 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 vendor. Oh, I hate that word vendor. You're going to be <laughs> relegated. You're going to be relegated to purchasing. But see, if you're seen as one of their peers, as one of them, they're going to be much more comfortable in having a conversation with you. This okay. is why what I yeah. I got a question for you. Yeah. You're sitting there and you have gray hair, right? Oh, thank you. Thank you for calling that out. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, you do. What if I am 28 years old and I don't have gray hair and I am talking to one of those big wigs, you know, the higher levels, and I really don't have the, the background or the moxie or the credentials to be able to have a one-on-one a -on -one conversation with somebody like you who's a big wig that has gray hair. I'm not mm -hmm. qualified. And yeah. I'm scared of you, by the way. I'm scared of you. Well, excuse me, but uh, how old was Zuckerberg when he created Facebook? How old was Bill Gates? How, you know, how old was Elon Musk when he really got going? Don't let age hold you back. It is the knowledge and how you come across. I know a lot of, of 25 and 28 year olds, as you described, who are incredibly brilliant, incredibly insightful. Yeah, I do too. It, it, it's the ability of having the confidence and the competence discussion with that senior level person. That's what it's all about. It's not being scared. It, it, it's, it's not being like, oh, wow, you look like my dad. No, 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 no. <laughs> Please. That really creep. That really creeps me out. Well, and as we, when, when, I, when I was a young person and people, I'd go out on calls and people would say to me, you remind me so much of my daughter. Um, that was always creepy too. 
because uh, it made me feel like I wasn't seen as a colleague like you're saying that I need to do. And, and you know, the truth is we have to speak that language, but sometimes we don't always have the depth of knowledge or expertise um, in our background. So what do you suggest salespeople do to make themselves worthy of talking to? All I need is one piece of information that's going to lead to one question. And whatever they share with me, I'm going to in turn ask them a follow-up question. I'm going to okay. ask them to continue to expand on it. One of the challenges that that people have when they prospect is they feel that they have to get into this script. They have to get into this, do, 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 you know, you know, yep. one, yep. two, three, four. No, 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 no. Your objective in prospecting, the privilege, honor, and respect to be able to meet with that person again. However that is, whether it be on the phone, whether it be by way of email, whether that be in person. So all I need to do is I just have to have one piece of information that I can ask you one question, and then I ask you a follow-up question. And the follow-up question can be, that's a great point. Can, can you expand a little more on that? Now, you notice I'm not saying that from a script. I'm saying that from a point of, yeah, I'm really interested in knowing. You treat people with respect, and you listen and value to what they have to say. And the way you respect and value is by asking them to make an additional comment on what they just said. You know, that I, goes a long ways to moving you. To yeah, I think what you're saying is really important because when I see people preparing for calls, the one thing that they, they do is they prepare what they're going to say. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to say that to, you know, when I get you on the phone. But there's one thing that they often forget. And I think they have to plan it ahead of time. And that is what question am I going to ask? Okay. It's just the start off question. All I have to have is one question. One it's all question. I need. one question. Right. Then you let whatever they say share with you the next piece, the next piece, the next piece. Right. Right. And and people don't plan that question. And yet that that question is so crucial. I mean, if you're talking to somebody and you say, you know, some of the top three trends in your industry are A, B, and C, um, which of these is the most important is a great question to ask because it tells you where they're going. Or if you talk with them about, for example, if I was calling and talking with them about a, a sales training program, I might say, you know, ask about what they found are the biggest challenges that they're dealing with now, the biggest sales challenges that people are facing. But then the question has to be, um, of those three that you mentioned, which takes priority right now? I mean, just it's a question that opens the door to the conversation. Right, right. All I have to do is get the door open, and then I can keep dialoguing and keep dialoguing. And I'm yeah. earning the right, the privilege, honor, and respect to meet with that person again. Boy, that almost sounds like a boy. Prospecting is not is it is not the mysterious, freaky thing. No, no, it, it really is is a fun process when you handle it correctly. Okay, Mark, that needs explanation because I don't think you know most people who are listening would say, "Oh my God, this is so <laughs> fun." I can't wait to get off the interview so I can bang out 10 calls right now. I don't think we're hearing that. So You're probably right because they're probably saying I'm smoking dope and jumping rope by saying that. Right. But here's the whole thing. Here's the whole thing. You know, there's a lot of things in life that you may not say I really enjoy doing, but you know you got to do it. And here's the whole thing. I'm not going to be gun shy about prospecting for one very simple reason. Because A, I want to eat, okay? That's a very basic piece. But here's the whole thing. If you believe that what you have can help somebody achieve an outcome that they did not think was possible, mm -hmm. doesn't that get you excited? Doesn't that feel good? I mean, you, you, you for instance, you know, you, you've delivered a lot of training programs, a lot of development programs. That jazzes you when you see a company that you're working with being able to achieve results that they weren't That's able to achieve best. before. Yeah. That jazzes you. And it doesn't matter what we sell. It could be a product, could be a service. But it, it really, when you look to the outcome, what you are doing is you're selling the outcome, the result, the benefit. Right. And you're dealing with people. When you look at it from that regard, yeah, I think it takes on a different perspective. I, I agree with you that when you honestly understand that what you do matters, it does take on a different perspective. And I would like to go back to this fun part and, and go to uh, – quote a resource that I have always felt was deeply profound. And that would be Mary Poppins. And she said, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. And when you find the fun, then snap, the job's a game. Da -da -da -da. And then she goes into um, a spoonful of sugar. But the truth of the matter is, 
if we can find fun in our prospecting, first of all, if we know that it makes a difference, and then we can find the fun in it by, by creating challenges ourselves, by deciding that we want to see how we can, if we get somebody on the line, how we can actually engage them and have a really good conversation, that does make you feel good. That really does. It, do, it, it does make you feel good. And it was really good how you put snap selling into the dialogue of this interview. So that's I excellent. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we got to snap to it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you the final word. Hey, the final word is this. If you really want to be able to close more sales without discounting, come back and question yourself, what is the prospecting process that you're using? And oh, by the way, the prospect, prospecting process must be a process because don't think it's one and done. And don't think it's, it's, I can just make a few phone calls and I'm going to be done. No, it's not. Because really the key to prospecting is having the plan and following through. The number one problem people have when it comes to prospecting is they simply do not follow through. Follow through and you will achieve results. As, as our good friend Jeb Lunt says, you know, what you prospect today is what you'll close next month. And it is amazing. Now, if you want to be closing more deals next month, you better start prospecting exactly. this, yeah. this month. So yeah. that's why I wrote the book, High Profit Prospecting. Yep. And it's available. Yep. So let me just say to everybody, if you're listening in, this book is now just available, just available. So you can get your copy. I think it's on Amazon and everywhere and probably out of bookstores uh, right now too. And I want to thank Mark Hunter for being here today and sharing his wisdom on high profit prospecting with us. Thanks, Mark. Thanks so much. Great selling.